Of all the animals that I appreciate observing and watching, perhaps the most is the North American bison, the buffalo. Now, these animals are really not buffalo. They're not related to any other buffalo in the world. They're properly bison because they're a unique species, unique to North America. And I had the opportunity to spend a week in Yellowstone as part of my spring break from the university this year. And while I was there, I spent a lot of time simply sitting and watching and observing the bison. So today I want to share a little bit about that, and I'll be talking more about my time in Yellowstone and reflections about spirituality with that trip in our, my next video. So please be sure to subscribe to this channel and to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. Bison are animals that have been revered by the Plains Indians, the Native American people, the American Plains. Uh, it's part of their culture. They're a stately, strong, beautiful animal. They're very placid and peaceful and, and just simply move through the West. And the unique feature for native people were that every part of the buffalo, every part of the bison was something that could be used. So the coat could be used for warmth as a blanket or for clothing. Uh, the, the meat, of course, for food. Uh, the bones were used to make tools, the teeth for ornaments. Everything that was part of the bison was used within native cultures. And then Europeans came on the scene and as part of the westward expansion, they began to decimate the bison population shooting them random, randomly, even from trains just driving by and shooting as many as they could and leaving the carcasses rot on the plains. And the bison came close to extinction, but they are now revived and protected in many uh, federally protected lands, and the herds are, are beautiful to observe. And so whenever I was in Yellowstone, I was able to see various herds and, and watch them move throughout their day. It was March, so they were moving from the, the central part of the park to Lammer Valley, where grass was beginning to green, and so they were able to get fresh food. And so they were moving about quite a bit in this kind of migration to green grass. And as we watched them in different settings, I became more and more in awe of them again. Now, it wasn't like this is the first time I'd ever seen bison, uh, but this was a time whenever I was really able to just spend a lot of time. For instance, one day, as we were coming into Lammer Valley, there's a bridge that you drive across, across a, a ravine. And as we started on the ravine, on the bridge, we saw at the other end that was a herd of bison coming towards us and we stopped the car and this large herd slowly came across the bridge. And it was like a river of bison coming towards us and they just sort of moved right around our vehicle. They were as close to the car as our rear side view mirrors were so that you could look out the side mirror and really look into the eye of the animal. You could see their faces. You could see the distinct images of each animal so that they no longer were part of a herd, but they were individuals with unique features. And, and that was really awe-inspiring awe for me to get a sense of the individual the young, the old, the different changes with maturity and seeing how life was displayed on them as they moved past our vehicle. Perhaps the day that was most enlightening for me or revolution, uh, revelatory for me in, in regards to spirituality came in the day we were having lunch in Lammer Valley. We pulled onto one of the, the roadside uh, areas there, right along uh, the road, and set up for lunch. And I was aware that both to the right and to the left of the road, there were lots of bison. There were a number of different herds. And as we sat and, and had lunch on that sunny day, 
I looked out across the herds and yeah, there were some of the younger bison who were playful and, and jumping and bumping into each other and just playing bison games. There were older bison who simply were laying in the warm sun and resting. But the majority of the bison were grazing on that fresh green grass. And as they grazed, they would simply eat a bit and take a step and eat a bit. And whatever it was, whether they were laying in the sun or eating or playful, they were perfectly mindful. They were in the present moment. You know, that Buddhist practice of mindfulness, the Christian practice of the practice of presence, to be present in the moment. And that's what they were exemplifying. And I realized that they were so different from we are, from how we are, that, you know, we're always caught up in our thoughts. We're thinking about what we need to do, we're planning or developing a strategy or making lists or whatever we're doing to move into the future. Or we're rehashing what happened in the past and, and thinking about regrets and wishing we would have done things differently. But so rarely are we simply in the present moment, enjoying the sun, enjoying the fresh grass, enjoying the companionship of others just simply being. You know, our lives are so caught up with multitasking. We're often tethered to our devices, our phones, our tablets. They're continually notifying us of new messages, messages and emails and notifications from various apps, all of which pull us away from the present moment and cause us to be distracted. How much better our lives would be if we were able to live in the present moment, to simply be present the way these bison were present, just being in the valley and, and being at peace and contentment. That, I believe, is the way we are called to live. That's how we are healthiest. And we move into that healthy way of being by beginning to incorporate that time of mindfulness, that practice of presence in our lives. Perhaps we do it for five or 10 or 15 minutes a day and allow it to grow more and more. Perhaps we take vacations and holidays and, and do what I was doing, simply being present with what was in front of me and around me. However it is we do it, we learn to incorporate it more and more and more so that our lives are more filled with contentment and peace. And it's in that that we let go of everything else and come home to ourself in a very healthy and positive way. You know, many people talk about having animals as spiritual guides or as spirit animals or that they tell me they learn lessons from their animals. I think perhaps what we can learn best from bison and from dogs and cats and from many other animals is how to live in the present moment, to accept life as it is right now and to be aware of what's around us so that we can experience peace and contentment. And it's that peace and contentment that brings us to a sense of wholeness of being a humble-mindedness, patience, and a sense of love for ourselves and others. Again, next week I'll talk a little bit more about Yellowstone, but until then, please be sure to subscribe to this channel, share this video. I'm sure you have some friends who are animal lovers. Leave me some comments about how you've been inspired by animals. And know that I really appreciate that you take time to watch the videos on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Thank you and have a really great day.